how to configure two virtual machines across fault domain in an availability set for 99.95% uptime or deploying two machines but this time across availability zones for 99.99% uptime. We are going to look at step-by-step -step procedure to deploy virtual machines in availability set for high availability in this episode. Welcome to another episode of a weekly video series with me Atul Kumar from team K2 Academy where we take you on your journey to cloud from complete beginner that's stage one as your fundamentals to stage two as your administrator to all the way to stage three and expert level that's DevOps or as your solutions architect. So in the previous episode I discussed about that when you create a virtual machine you get an option to select a availability zone or availability set. I also discussed about what is fault domain, what is availability zone or a reason or geography inside Azure. If you missed the previous episode, you can check it out by going to ketonacademy.com forward slash az10414. Now, since posting that video, I got a lot of questions on this topic. So looking at these numbers questions we got in the previous episode, as well as in our free trainings, I decided to take one of the chapters from our compute module in Azure administration certification training where she covers a step-by-step -step demo of creating these virtual machines inside as availability set or across availability zone. So how to create these virtual machines in a scale set and what are the various options mean. She first starts with the virtual machine availability covering planned or unplanned outages. She then covers step-by-step -step hands-on lab, creating two virtual machines spread across two fault domain and two update domain, but inside the availability set. Now this availability set only provides 99.95% availability. So, however, if you want a higher availability option, then you need to deploy your virtual machines across availability zone, and then you will get 99.99% uptime. So after showing you deploying machines across availability set, she is going to also show you how to create these machines across two availability zones. So let's see what Eva has to cover. In the previous module, we have seen how to create a Windows web server and a Linux web server. The problem with both of them are they are standalone service. What if there is a downtime or if there is anything else which is happening to my service? How do I recover them? Unfortunately, we don't have an option. If it is a standalone virtual machine, it comes with 99.9% .9 availability, which means it has eight hours and 50 plus minutes of downtime per year. Can I place my high availability code in this virtual machine? Clearly no, I need a better option. Before getting into the option, we will see what can happen to my individual virtual machine. The first one is unexpected downtime. In that case, Microsoft has a healing process. If there is a problem from their side, automatically it is migrated to another available virtual machine. This is why we have four extra update domains in a fault domain. And within maintenance, we have planned maintenance and unplanned hardware maintenance. Planned maintenance, it is an infrastructure as a service for Microsoft with maximum capital expenditure, which means they have to take care of the hardware maintenance, patch updates, operating system updates. And in that case, Microsoft usually let us know three weeks before. And also we get multiple notification emails. But on the hardware level, if there is a problem with the memory or if there is any one PCI card which is in a pre-failure condition or there is a sudden shutdown of a machine because of overheating, what do we do in that case? We need to give some time for Microsoft to recover this. But at the same time, can I wait? Can I ask my customers to wait? The answer is no. Hence, we need to go for further availability option. Let's see what are all the option. In high availability, we are going to see two different options. One is virtual machine in availability set. Another one is virtual machine in availability zone. We will start with availability set. In order to understand this better, I'm going to explain it in the whiteboard. We will draw three fault domains which is rack. 
and every rack has 20 usable update domains. Let's assume here is my one VM. What if the top of the rack switch in this particular rack is gone? I get a downtime, which is eight hours of downtime. What if this particular server is gone? I still get a downtime. In order to avoid this, we have virtual machine in availability set. Here, I have the concept of distributing this virtual machine into another update domain, another fault domain, but within the same data center. Let's say this is fault domain 1, 2, and 3. And for virtual machine and availability set, I need minimum of two virtual machines. You cannot accomplish this setup with one virtual machines. So I have my first virtual machine here. My second virtual machine will be automatically placed by Azure in another fault domain, another update domain, which is not affected during the planned maintenance. Similarly, I can go for maximum of three fault domains and 20 update domains. This is the limitation that I have for virtual machine and availability set. By accomplishing this, I get 99.95% availability wherein I still have 4 hours 50 minutes of downtime. Can my VMs in virtual machine and availability set can survive if there is a problem in the data center level? The answer is no, because if there is a problem with the data center level, probably a lightning strike or any other natural calamities or power issues, both my VMs will be down. This is why Microsoft has given four hours and 50 minutes of downtime. Let's go ahead and deploy virtual machine and availability set in the lab. And this is also one of your exam lab. Please do it along with me. I'm in the portal. Click on virtual machine. And for this, I'm going to create a new resource group. I'm going to name it as high availability. VM AS, VM in availability set. And I'm going to choose East US. And the last time we have ignored this particular option. This time we are going to choose availability set and we don't have any existing availability set. Hence, we have to create new. We'll give it as a, we'll give a name. Do you see the maximum fault domain is three and the maximum update domain is 20? But here I'm going to create only two virtual machines and availability set. So it can be spread across only two fault domains and only two update domains. Hence, I'm keeping both of them as two. I'll choose Ubuntu machine and I will keep the basic SKU. I have given the password and confirmed the same password. Rest all procedure is similar to creating a virtual machine. Hence, I haven't explained about my individual clicks and I'm ignoring the tag also. And I hope you understood the importance of tag and why we need tag in the real time environment. But this is for testing purpose. Hence, I'm ignoring these options. The deployment is initiated, which is going to take the next three minutes time. I will pause the video. I will come back and I will add the second virtual machine in the same availability set. We will see what are all the options that we have to choose. Our first virtual machine in the availability set is ready. Now let's create our second virtual machine in the same availability set. It has to be in the same resource group. I'm giving a different name. It must be in the same region as well. Choose availability set. And now we have the AS1, our, our availability set in the drop down menu. I'm keeping all these basic options. Ports must be allowed. And under disk and networking, I'm keeping all the basic option. Once the validation is passed, the deployment is started. I'll pause for some time and I will get back once the deployment is completed. Our second VM in the virtual machine and availability set is ready. Now let's go to the resource group and see what are all the resources which are getting deployed. As you can see, it is pretty much same like our previous lab, which is creating virtual machine. There is only one thing which is holding both these VMs together. That is our availability set. Here we have one extra resource, which is 
showing a dashboard for both the virtual machines. If you see both the virtual machines are running here, the fault domains numbering starts from zero, not one, two, three. It is zero, one and two. So the first virtual machine is in zero fault domain and zero update domain. And the second one is in first fault domain, first update domain. So we have two fault domains, two update domains. Let's see how exactly it is spread. We have a very nice PPT for it. This is what exactly we have accomplished. We have image one, image two, which means VM one and VM two. If there is a planned maintenance, only one update domain, which means my first VM will be rebooted. At that time, my customers will be routed to the second VM. And if there is a fault domain related problem, which means if there is a hardware problem, switch problem, my VMs will not be affected. My virtual machines in availability set are in two different fault domains, two different update domains. Now, this is how I get my 99.95% availability, which means I still have four and a half hours of downtime. My customers are still not okay for it. I need something better as little more high availability. What are my other options? We will see in the next lab along with the next lecture. The next level of availability option that I have is availability zones, VM in availability zones. This comes with 99.99% high availability, which means I get only 53 minutes downtime per year. That's much better than the previous two option, isn't it? In this, my first virtual machine will be in one availability zone and my second virtual machine in the second availability zone, which is a different campus, but within the same region. And do you remember what is region? It is nothing but a city. One availability zone may be inside the city with a different power transformer. Another availability zone may be outside the city in a different power grid. And overall, the maximum of availability zones so far any region has is only three. Minimum, it could be zero. For example, if you pick up the South India region, there are no availability zone concept at all. But if you pick up East US, we have all three availability zones. If there is a regional level disaster, we will not be able to recover this. But this is the maximum availability that we have. If there is a zonal level disaster, for example, there is a power grid which has gone bad or there is a lightning strike in this particular data center, I will still be able to get my data from the second machine from the second availability zone. Now let's do a lab for virtual machines in availability zones. I'm in the portal click on virtual machines. Again, this is pretty much the same procedure, but there are two different options which we need to be very careful. Which two options we will see. I'll put it in the same resource group, high availability, VMAZ1. And this time I will put it in East US. Here I will create availability zone. Last time we have created it in availability set. And the previous time we haven't chosen anything for the infrastructure redundancy. This time it's going to be availability zone. And do you see the maximum that I have is three. That's because I have chosen East US. Let me choose South India. No availability zones are available for this location. This is why planning where to create your virtual machine or virtual machine in availability set or availability zone is very important. Location plays a major role. With ECUS, I have all three. So for the first VM, this is my first virtual machine in availability zone. So I'm going to give one. When we create our second virtual machine and availability zone, we need to give two. So this is the first important option. This is also your exam lab and make sure you don't do any mistake in this and also the next point. So these two are the important points. I'll leave it with basics. I'll probably change the CPU size because I have limitation of six. I mean, we all have limitation of six core CPUs. I have given the username and password. Rest all procedure is same. But in the third page, in the networking page, under public IP, click on create new. This is the second option that we have to be very careful about. 
click on create new and make this IP zone redundant. By default, the public IP will be static. You don't have to manually change it, but make this zone redundant. This is a very, very important step. If you don't do this, there will not be any migration from one availability zone to another availability zone. It functions pretty much like an availability set. Rest all options are same. Hence, I'm going to give review and create. Once the validation is passed, I will create this virtual machine, which is going to take three minutes time. So I will pause the video. My first virtual machine in availability zone is ready. Now let's see how to add our second virtual machine in availability zone. Click on virtual machine and then add. We will put it in the same resource group. Here I'm going to name it as VMAZ2. It must be in the same region, which is East US. Choose availability zone. This time it has to be number two. I'll change the size of the virtual machine to a one core machine. Allow the internet traffic. And once again, here is the second step that you need to be very careful. Click on the public IPs, create new option and make it zone redundant, not only confined towards zone two. We are making it zone redundant. Since I'm going to keep other options basic, I'm creating here itself. Now this initialization and deployment will go for a few minutes, but I hope you understand the concept. This is how we have to add two or three different virtual machines in availability zone. Now this is how we accomplish maximum availability in Azure for virtual machines. You might wonder, I still have 53 minutes of downtime. Is that the maximum or is that the best Azure can give? Absolutely not. Here is where you need to ask yourself the question, how can I minimize it to zero instead of 53 minutes? Here is where you need to think beyond virtual machine or VMs the right option for me or should I go for web apps or Azure Container Services or Service Fabric. These are all the other compute options of Azure. We also have batch, which is a high performance computing for big compute and big data. These are all the other options that we have. But in virtual machine, the maximum availability is only via virtual machine and availability zones. Try practicing the lab with those two configuration options. And this is going to be your exam lab as well. Well, that was Eva, our Microsoft certified trainer. Now we're showing you step-by-step -step procedure to create virtual machines in scale set or across availability zone for high availability. Now in the next episode, we'll look at another high availability option from Azure AZ-104 administration certification training, that's scale set, where scale set means auto scaling in Azure cloud so that when a load increases on a virtual machine, Azure is going to automatically create a another machine. So we'll look at this by using step-by-step -step lab and then testing when load increases as you're automatically adding or creating new virtual machines. Till then, if you have not yet done as your administration certification, then don't forget to check out free 90 minute class with me and Eva at ketonacademy.com forward slash AZ10402. I'll see you next week with auto scaling or configuring scale set in Azure cloud.